We continue our coverage here on what seems to be a peril day on the HBCU Digest with a uh, really unique conversation um, with several wonderful sisters from the University of the District of Columbia, the flagship of the nation's capital, the flagship HBCU. And joining us today, uh, the distinguished dean of UDC School of Law, uh, Renee Hutchins, uh, Deanna Dorsey, who is the owner and proprietor of the District of Clothing, and Ada Sherlock and Toby, UDC School of Law's director of development. So, this is a conversation about a really, really dope collaboration between an apparel company and the School of Law. And Deanna, I would start with you. Um, this is a clothing company. You start, obviously, as an entrepreneurial venture, but then you thought enough about UDC to look at ways that it can benefit that school of law, that institution. Talk about your journey in this in this entrepreneurial vein and how you came to 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 find an opportunity to work with UDC in, a, in an official capacity. Yeah, thank you so much for having me today. I do have to correct you. UDC Law actually found me, so I am blessed ah. and grateful for the opportunity to work alongside them. <laughs> um, but it, you know, it's it's honestly it started off as a cold email. And it's just snowballed to having us here with you today. Um, but I would have to say that um, having the unique ability to collaborate with a, a university that's also HBCU that also provides legal services to the to the local community here in Washington D.C. Um, I mean, why not? You know if I can continue to give back in the most minuscule ways possible to support them in any way possible in their mission and to help uh, remove student debt, I, I mean, it's a win-win. So let, let's talk about the the infrastructure of that out of shoulder. So this is, this is something where proceeds from t-shirts designed by the district of clothing, which are UDC branded, uh, to come back to the institution in support of scholarships and student support at the School of Law, right? That's correct. That's correct. So um, every piece that's within the collection, um, and this is our, our capsule collection, every piece, um, a portion of that will go back to our students. And and how does that, is it is it merit-based? Is it need-based? Or how does the, the, the it's need -based. construct of it work? It's need-based need -based scholarships at the School of Law. Yeah. And Dean, you can speak to the importance of this because even though... The, the, the school of law at UDC is obviously the, the, the public law school for DC and has given wonderful opportunities to people of all qual uh, all walks of life across the city. Um, and as somebody who, in, who grew up in the DMV, I can certainly appreciate what it, what it really means to the city. What, what, it, what, what do you look at this partnership as at its core and as a foundation for similar things that could be done through the school to support the training of legal professionals in the District of Columbia. So Jared, thank you for having us here today. This is a really exciting opportunity to talk about the amazing work that the university is doing and that the law school is doing and about this really important partnership, right? Mm -hmm. So what we know is that talent is equally distributed across the population. What we also know is that access to opportunity is not. And so one of the things that the law school has always been committed to doing is giving access to opportunity to talented students. And one way we do that is by ensuring that they can afford to come. Law school is expensive, right? Like, let's be real about it. Law school costs a lot of money. Mm -hmm. It is a lot of years of investment. And what we want to make sure is happening is that talented students aren't prevented from entering a legal education because they don't have the money to do that. And so when we were looking for ways to not just increase fundraising, right, but also increase recognition of this amazing institution that is the People's Law School, right? UDC is the district's high, it, it, institution of higher education, right? And right. so we were thinking of ways to increase the, 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 um, uh, knowledge of that institution and the branding of that institution, right? We wanted to partner with somebody who was as committed to the district as we are, and District of Clothing is that institution, right? We are about elevating up the voices of people of color. We are about elevating up the voices of women. And Diona just, she encapsulates all of that, right? So perfectly. And so this partnership is about access. It is about information. 
It is about holding up the voices of marginalized folks. And, and, and so all of that just perfectly dovetails in terms of this partnership. And I have to say, I'm going to give you a little shout out here on District of Clothing. I have to say the quality of their product is superlative. Like it mm. is excellent. <laughs> and as we think about providing excellence to our students across the entire array of services we provide to them, starting with a high quality legal education, right? And the number six clinical law program in the country, running all the way to what do their sweatshirts look like? Mm. District of Clothing hit the mark, right? It hit the mark in terms of quality. Let, let, let's talk about that, Deanna, because okay. th th that's an important that's an important point that the dean is making, because. There are many schools in the District of Columbia, private and, and, and obviously one public that we hold dear. There are a number of communities. There are a number of uh, cross sections of students that you could have reached out to and maybe still can. But you could have started with a number of groups of people. You selected UDC. What is it about the UDC brand that particularly resonates with you as an entrepreneur to say, I want to start with this community, helping this community, not only just help keep students and graduate them in the school of law. But this is a big brand that I think could resonate throughout the city. Yeah. And, and again, just to be clear, UDC law reached out to me. So again, I'm very grateful for that opportunity, but I think it's, um, you know, just what the Dean was saying, the ability, I, I was half raised here in Washington, DC. Mm -hmm. And so having the ability to give back to my hometown, to an area and to a people who have poured so much into, into me, um, that's a blessing. And that's what, you know, as a young black businesswoman, that's all I want to do is to be able to share and to give back and to help each other climb. I think specifically, um, and I got, you know, very grateful and, and emotional to hear the dean say some of those things because, <laughs> you know, it takes me back. My grandfather didn't go past the sixth grade, but he, mm. he used apparel to help transcend whenever he would walk into a bank, you know, when he was at church, when he was walking down the street, he used his apparel to help him transcend because it wasn't, you know, it, it, his, where he was in that moment wasn't necessarily where he was going to go. Mm. And so that is one of the um, linchpins just in terms of concepts that I hold dear to with District of Clothing, um, helping people, you know, have pride within to encourage people um, toward action and toward progression and toward um, having a, a deep self-love, but then also being able to let people know, you know, how you feel, especially during this tumultuous, beautiful, chaotic time <laughs> that we're in here in 2021. Um, and I know as a, uh, I graduated a long time ago, but as an alumnus <laughs> um, of my institution, I still wear those pieces that I got 10, 15 years ago. I can't, fit all of them, but you know, there's certain ones that I can still fit the same hat. You know what I mean? So those things really hold dear. Like when I when I look at my dad, he still wears, you know, certain hats and, you know, certain umbrella. Like those things, they they really mean something. And so I think it's important that when you are speaking to black people, when you are speaking to brown people, when you are speaking to women, when you are speaking to people who are typically underserved, that you present them with the quality that you know that they possess within, you present them with the quality that the, you know that they can, you know, reach and attain in the in the near future, um, and that you show them, um, you know, you you show them how you value them, mm -hmm. and we can do that through apparel. We can use apparel as a tool to help elevate people, and so that's kind of. Um, what the goal is. And that's why I, I really try to use the best quality of, of um, materials, um, sustainable as well, um, to help us be able to show people that we care about you, we care about your values, and we care about your future. DC is known for uh, independent clothing companies. Uh, when I was growing up, it, it, it was DDTP. That was huge. When I was and when Makunu, I was a kid, Makunu was Makunu, my favorite. I mean, so yep. I mean, we this is this is part of that that tradition in the city. Just like we have a tradition with our music, we have a tradition with our food, and so it aligns so perfectly with UDC and its mission and its identity in the city. So when you think about the ways that you could use this as a as a development opportunity to reach donors, to encourage people to give to the institution, even through buying apparel or just supporting scholarships how how much does this add to the profile 
when you're approaching people with resources to help uh, to keep students persist and through uh, the law school to get out and make a difference in D.C.? It has a great deal. We have a wonderful group of alumni students as well that want to wear their pride and it helps us keep um, keep the UDC law spirit alive within each and every one of our students as well as our alumni so that they're able to keep that word going out and it allows us to have an opportunity to go ahead and reach out to those people who have the resources um, to allow us to create scholarships, et cetera. Dean, I would ask you, you know, for everything wonderful that UDC is, um, more wonderful things have happened in recent years, um, especially when you compare them to, to previous generations or previous years. Um, you have a president who is a lawyer by trade. Uh, you have a president who is unafraid to talk about social justice um, and, the, and, and the way that law plays into the, into the, the implementation of social justice or interpretation. Um, all these things together, and yet UDC still, even for somebody like me, feels like an underdog. Is that is that a is that a fair assessment, or are we kind of missing so much about a school that is so unique with a law school, a community college, a four year institution? Are we missing something that's so unique, and this is just an offshoot of that uniqueness about UDC? So I think that. Um, describing it as an underdog is fair, not because substantively it is an underdog, but because in messaging, I don't know that the university has historically done a tremendously good job of speaking out the incredible good work that is happening here. Um, the, the leadership team that is in place at the university now from President Mason down is remarkable. The commitment of the people inside these walls to elevating up black and brown and underserved communities is remarkable. Um, we have a choice to be anywhere that we wanna be. Mm. And we choose to be here because we are committed to the students that are at this institution. I say all the time that the students at UDC Law are my North Star. They are the reason that I get up early and go to bed late and work weekends because all that we have to do is set them on the path and get out of their way and they're going to light the world on fire. And so it, it literally, literally, the, the, the talent inside these walls is breathtaking. And so my hope is, right, that, that what you are starting to see is the turn of a trend. What you are starting to see is that we are going to do a better job of speaking out our excellence so that we stop being the underdog, right? Mm -hmm. And we start to become the only public land grant institution in an, an urban center, that we start to become the only HBCU law school with a number six ranked clinical law program, right? That we start to become an affordable access institution that produces excellence, including, you know, accreditations at our business school, our law school, our, our undergraduate institution, our engineering school, right? That, that we really start to speak out the amazing talent that is inside these walls so that people stop asking, really, are you an underdog, right? That people really start to understand that this is the district's public institution. And we can meet our students from community education to professional school. We can meet them wherever along that journey they are so that we can maximize their potential so that they can recognize the excellence that resides within them. That's the goal. And if I could just piggyback off of that, you know, another tool that the apparel does um, is to show other community members, younger community members, when they see it, they also say, oh, I can go there too. You know, I see someone like me wearing something that interests me and it sort of piques their interest. And then they they kind of follow it on social media. Then maybe they Google it. Then they're, you know, it, it's tiny little steps that we're using as tools to help make more people aware of the law school in itself, but also the fact that they they belong there too. And, then, and let me round up with this question. And I, and I would ask you, uh, the Dean and, and you, Deanna, um, what does it mean to have the school reach out to you for this partnership? Because a lot of times in our community, you know, there's 
is a stereotype that it's hard to get an HBCU. It's hard to get, you know, a, a big company of ours to partner with a, a smaller entity or a, a smaller, you know, entrepreneurial project. And that wasn't the case. Um, UDC was active about saying we want to get with a black woman owned business um, and do this thing. How much does it mean for you as an entrepreneur? And 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 Dean Hutchins, how much does it mean to you to be able to be in a position to identify talent like that and say we want to align with that? Dion, I'll start with you first. Uh, it means everything, you know. Um, it means everything. I, you know, I'm I'm grateful. Um, it is always a wonderful and a beautiful thing to be seen, but to be seen by your people to be seen by you know people who are in positions to help you rise up there's there's no word for that so i would i would only add girl we see you and you are <laughs> knocking it out of the park um all day every day we are about <laughs> elevating up voices we don't just talk to talk we walk the walk and we mean that um so girl we see you thank you this is this thank is the start you. of a very long relationship <laughs> <laughs> of your partnership Really?